On today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. Got two different size carburetors to see which one will fit. And a Navy air filter. Let's see if I can cram one of these in here. On the Condor. <sighs> well, let's get all that plastic off of there. There. Let's get this coil off of here. Looks like we're going to have to take the air box off. This one's a 26 millimeter. This one's a 28 millimeter. I hope this 28 millimeter will fit up in there. Maybe. It said it had a 27 on here. We're going to find out. Hmm. What? Something eat through this? I guess it's a good idea I took this off. I had this off, there was a filter in there. Wow, that is not good. Did you guys see that? What? I think it's mouse poopy, which means they got in here and ate through that filter. The mice are fierce around here, boys. That's what I've been telling you. Hmm. Filter's still good. How the heck? How'd that get in there? Maybe they're just pieces of plastic? Well, that's the strangest thing. There's no other way for them to get in there. That's a pretty good fit. Like charcoal? What the heck is that? Either way, it's not going back on. This new company reached out to me that sells all kinds of upgrades for these Chinese bikes. I'll put some of their stuff on my website because they're supposed to be working with us in getting Chinese upgrades that they'll keep in stock. They already have carburetors and some other stuff. They're working on getting sprockets, chains. Also, I told them to put a package together like Taco used to have. Like a carb upgrade kit. Chain and sprockets. All these different combos that they could put together. I think it would be a great idea for everybody. Let's see. Let's do a side by side. It says it's a PZ27. So I figured a 26 would be too small. But wow, that's a lot bigger. Let's see what that 26 looks like. Yeah, so if you have any requests or good ideas for this Amazon seller, it looks the same. Jeez, it looks like the same carburetor. It says it's a PE26. Hmm. Even though this says it's a 27, I guess I should measure it because it's definitely not a 27 millimeter. Let me get my digital calipers. I guess I didn't measure this the last time I had it off. I just read what it was, huh? It is, in fact, a 26 at the very end, but watch how this tapers in. tapers into a 22 huh that's 26 even this tapers into a 25 so it tapers into a 25 by 22 and I can't even get all the way in there with these calipers this wow this is in fact a 29 hmm. says it's a 26 and it's a 29 straight through. Does it taper at all? I guess it tapers very slightly. Let's see if it fits. Fingers crossed, boys. Fingers crossed. Ah, oh, damn it. Idle screw is going to have to have a smaller one if it's going to work at all. That's not a big deal. <laughs> I don't think. Wow, look at that. Boy, that idle screw. Oh, that sucks. That idle screw. 
is going to be literally. You see that? Once this is bolted in, yeah, there's not going to be much room. What can we do about that? I don't have any other boots like this. Other than that, I think it'll it'll probably work. Can't cut this bar off. That's for sure. What the heck can I do? It has an enrichment circuit. It needs that spring so it doesn't vibrate when you're adjusting the throttle. Right there is where it touches. I mean, I could cut this off and grind a screwdriver slot and then dent the threads a little bit so they're tight and they don't back out. There'd just be no way, unless I drill a hole through this frame, <laughs> I suppose I could do that too. Drill a tiny hole just to get a small screwdriver in there. I kind of don't like that either. Unless I drill a hole and put a pipe through there and then weld it back in. It's the only way it's going to work, boys. Just for the halibut. Let's see how big this is here. Twenty-seven point forty-seven. So it's going to be a little smaller than this. Not too bad. I could pull this off and chamfer that edge a little bit. I don't think I have any spacers this size because I could push it out a little bit, right? Let's see. Now, if I had a shorter one of these boots, it does have just enough room up there above the gas tank. Just enough room. There's plenty of room to put the air filter. Hey, Gizmo. What's up? Did you get that chipmunk you were looking at? So they must have been pieces of carbon. Those little balls. Because they crush. Got me. Alright boys, well thanks for all the great ideas. I posted on Instagram and TikTok my problem with the idle screw. And you guys had some pretty awesome ideas. One of them, which I kind of shunned off because I thought you were talking about a 90 degree, which I don't want to put on here and have it stick out and have to cut my plastic. I did order a different style intake boot. The bore is bigger. It actually matches this carburetor pretty good see in there but I could feel it's a very very close match so that's a good thing these are loose so I do want to tighten those up a bit eventually I do want to fit a CG 250 engine on here because it definitely looks like it'll fit for now we're gonna see what we can get out of this CG 150 the opening into the head for the intake here is a little over 27 millimeters about 29 and a half millimeters so it's a little larger now to do it right i should probably chamfer this in but i'm not going to go through all that right now if you want to gain a little bit more because it will help slightly already had a little tiny bit of oil on that o-ring hmm. looks the same boys Out of all the ideas, I think the best idea is to cut this shorter. And then one of you guys said to use some Teflon tape. Since I can't use a spring on here, that's probably a pretty good idea. Some of you said to drill a hole. I thought about that. Before we do that, let's see what jets are in here. Being a 150, what do you think? About a 105. All depends on how much CFM you can suck through this 150. Let's get a little swish plate or whatever they call that. So that looks like a 115 main jet. And is that a 40? Looks like a 40 primary jet. Seems kind of big, but... It's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Let's check. 
check the mixture screw. Half, one, one and a half, two turns out. Half, one, one half, two. So I guess we're cutting this off. And we use some Teflon tape. I was gonna mark up these threads, but Teflon tape might hold it better. Look like it was right at the end of these threads. Maybe two threads in. Something to grip on, a little bit. Try three wraps, because I can always take some off. What's up, Gizmo? What do you think? It's gonna work? That actually might work pretty good. There it is, that's when it hits. So we'll go to about there. Hook this plunger up. Let's see where this clip is set. We are on the middle, middle groove. We'll leave it there. Nice tight fit in there. That's what she said. Put the cap on first. Does this have an adjustable? No, it doesn't. Some of these caps have adjustments. And that's that. We got our little plastic keeper in there. Alright, I got enough slack in my throttle tube. That's good. We're all hooked up except the gas line. Hook this up temp, well, possibly permanently. Put that boot back on my spark plug. Now all I have to do is hook the fuel line up and see if it's jetted properly. A little tighter fit. Turn the fuel on. See if it leaks. No more throttle choke, boys. Got to reach up in there and get the enrichment plunger, which is kind of way up in there. I don't think I can get it from the other side. Definitely not with the plastic on. No leaks. Got this nice Nivy filter. Spray some filter oil on that. That ought to do her. Dripping a bit. Like that. That fits in there pretty good. Almost like it's made for it, huh? It looks all together. Let's open the garage door and try it out. Darn it. Warmed up pretty good. So oh, about one and a half turns out. See if we can lower that idle a little more. that off. Put the seat on it. The condor.
throttle's a little boggy. See? Yeah, see that primary's a little fat. What I figured. I might have to put a 28 in for the primary. Main jet feels okay. Eh, we'll take it for a road test. Guess this battery shot. Gotta put her on a charger. Chook. Chokes in a little funny spot. difference. See a pulling wheel in second gear. Kitty! <laughs> Kitty. What's the matter? You don't like it? Meow. Shut the fuel off. I suppose I should see if they have the right pilot jet I'm going to need. Hmm, 35. Well, we'll go with that one. I guess while we're at it, See what other main jets they have come with it. 118, 112, and a 110. Hmm. We'll put the smaller pilot jet first, then see how we run. Drain this carburetor out. Looks like that's it. Hmm. It would have been nice if I could have tipped this. I probably can take the bowl off, but. Too much of a pain. I think it might be easier to take it right off of the head here. And flip it to the side. That's plenty of room. That enriching circuit. A little difficult to get to while it's on here, but. Kind of thought this was going to be. A little large, 40. Yep, 40. We'll get it dialed in pretty good. I may drop the main jet just a little too. I like keeping it a little bit fatter. This is a little tricky to get on there. So, of course. Now that I say that, it was a piece of cake. Could possibly get this carburetor off with the plastic on, but I think it'd be pretty difficult because of where they put this coil location. Now if I could... Uh, I don't want to put it up there either. I don't want to get it too hot. But it is what it is. Some are easy to get the carbs off. Some are not so easy to get the carbs off. A little grease on that O-ring. Greaser oil. Makes a better fit, and it protects the O-ring from drying out prematurely. No one likes premature anything, do they? That's what he says? Am I right? Definitely think it's easier to take that boot off than uh, get those nuts off for the carburetor removal. Put my overflow tube down in this hole. Fuel line looks good. I can reach the fuel petcock from here, so I'll turn it on. Make sure we have no leaks. What's up, Gizmo? No, you don't want to drink that. No. Mm-hmm. 
So that looks good. Let's see if we can get this air filter back on there. Don't want to drive that metal near that coil for sure. High voltage. Pop a cap back on and we're ready for another test drive. Still no leaks. So the bowl's holding. <laughs> ah, I forgot to charge this battery. I'm so silly sometimes. Man, I wish I could reach that from this side. That's not going to happen. What's up? Yeah. Putting a carb on it, trying to tune it in. I put a 26 millimeter. You the whole air box? I had to. I want to do this with the Chinese bike I just got. No, oh, yeah. I took it out once. The pilot jet was too big. It was good wide open. Yeah. A little rich because you'd feel it go like buh, 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 stumble when you let off. But even the low end when you're giving it like quarter throttle and let off it would load up. And it's only a 150. But I got blades 250. It'll fit right in there. And it's got plenty of room. So that'll be fun won't it? Almost identical motor. Matter of fact, I think that's the same head. I'm not sure. Probably. They probably just use a different board for the jug. Right. I got a brand new head in there I got from Taco. I'm going to lose those. Yeah, it seems to be running pretty good. Perfect. Definitely had a difference on a high RPM the last time I rode it because I could switch in a second and hit it and it'll pull the wheel off the ground a little bit when you pop it, you know, before it kind of, without trying. They busted a couple guys last week over by me on Reggie's car. Oh, did they catch him? Yeah, on DOZ you got a guy on the RMX 250. They got him, huh? Wow. Rolled up on the tow truck, everything. Oh, man. Who ran you off the road? Someone ran you off the road? Yeah, some guy in a Honda Accord coming from Dover last night. Like intentionally run you off the road? I passed him coming up by McDonald's on the double lane. When I went around him, he fucking turned the high beams on. And you know what I mean? So we come down on the Hungertown Flats, and I'm doing 85 on the DRZ, and I'm flying, riding my ass. So then I start to brake check him. I'm like slowing him down. I'm like, oh, come on, hit me, please. He's riding me, riding me, and then we come past the horse farm. He's still riding me all the way. We come down, coming up by Jehovah Witness. He passes me going up that hill. Gets in front of me, starts flipping me off, then slows down to like 40, brake checking me. And then we come up by the school, and he like takes off. We come up by the school, there's a car pulling out of the Dover Furnace Road, and he didn't see it at first. I think he thought the car was driving, but didn't realize how slow it was going. Almost rear ended his car like 80. He blocks him off, <laughs> swerves around the car, goes and takes off. So then I see he doesn't take Cricket Hill, so I'm like, oh man, this guy, I'm like, hopefully he goes to Mobile, you know what I mean? He's gonna pull over. He's sitting there, and he's like looking at me, like raving in his fucking window, and I'm like trying to get him pull over. Then we come down by that factory place that's like abandoned, and I come up on the side of his car again. He swerves over into the lane, and I'm leaning on his car now, like this. Oh man. He's pushing me off the road, and I'm new, we're doing 80. I'm like, oh my god, he's pushing me right now. He sends me off, and he, he like leans off, and as soon as he goes back in his lane, he hits the brake, and I realize that. So I'm like getting sent off the road, he bunched the mailbox, so I cut back over, and now I'm fuming. I'm like, oh no way, this guy just hit me. I'm like, no way. On the side of him again, I started beating the shit out of his car, hitting me. I'm kicking the shit out, trying to get him to stop, pull over. We come down by the garbage company, he gets stuck behind the car, now we're doing like 50, so now I'm right up on the side of him. I hit the side of it, come by, kick the mirror, push the mirror in, then I go and pass the car in front of him, I come down by mobile, I'm sitting at the light in the oncoming traffic lane, hoping he was going to hit a red light. around that car takes off down 20 uh, like you're so lucky dude i'm lucky too because i could have been down at 80. like i was leaning on the car i'm like he let off and you know when he let off i'm like oh shit. yeah catch myself you know and it, it was sketchy but you know I, like he intentionally hit me oh man right into me i couldn't believe it i'm like no way he just tried to take me out 
you would have stopped, I would have beat the shit out of you. I'm not even joking. I wouldn't even have hesitated. And then I would have hopped on the bike and I would have left. I don't care if he's got a dash cam or not. I hope he gets it all on video, whatever the hell the case is. Like, that's it. I'm on a motorcycle. You run me over from behind, I'm dead. Like, oh my God, dude. It was, it was a sketchy situation, but I'm like, he's so lucky he didn't stop. You're kind of defenseless on a bike, you know? You are. You can't do nothing. And like, yeah, I'm flying. I can't go any faster. Maybe, what, 93? You know what I mean? Yeah. To that's play. topped to out, right? I'm talking about, he's like, right here behind me like he could literally almost touch my tire with the bumper i'm like yo dude this guy's gonna hit me but he knew i was crazy that's why he wasn't pulling over new york plates yeah new york plates a honda the guy was wearing glasses looks like he was like 30. what's the big deal like people get all bent out of shape when you pass them i don't understand either you know <laughs> what i mean and we were coming up on the double lanes right there by the family dollar anyway what yeah was the difference you know not like you cut them off you yeah. passed them it's two lanes there. right yeah. it was a wild one yeah, uh, people on the road are just ridiculous nowadays anyway, man. I see people constantly going off the road and hitting the dirt and coming back and yeah. cutting out in front of people. Yeah. It's bad on the road now. Oh, I know. All right, I'm out of here, buddy. All right, man. Told you it's cray-cray out there. Ooh, it worked. Definitely feels better. Let's see. Oh yeah. Still a little fat on a... Especially the low RPM probably leave it at that although you could probably go down one yeah a little fat it's cold out now though try a zero to 60 or whatever it's a little downhill though you say it's a little better <laughs> definitely fat you know if you try to hammer it from the low rpm but i like the high rpm pull it's pretty cold out today too believe it or not i think it's like 45 50 tops so yeah i think we'll leave it at that let's get the plastic back on her huge difference second gear comes up and i'm not even pulling it i'll leave it a little fat because i like the higher rpm pull and you know it is a mechanical carb so when you open it up it's going to try to dump the fuel in being a little fatter at the higher rpms it'll it definitely performs differently i just got to remember to take off get the rpms up i'm impressed condors all put back together i did put it on a trickle charger and it charged up pretty quick so i think that new battery isn't that good condors going to florida when we go down in a little bit i have a nice little bike and a big bike the Raven and a Condor will be in Florida. Pretty good power gain with that 26 millimeter Nibby Carb. I'll put the links below. And if you do it, you, you may want to put, you know, a next size smaller main jet. But for me, it's good. High RPMs, it definitely pulls really good. Till next time, stay cheesy, my friends. Gizmo's got a new friend. You got a new friend, Gizmo? Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.